Hi, so this is uh, another comfy video. It came out of the last video I made and where I was controlling how the initial composition went and I was using a, a method of using latents to do that. But um, I found that the method with latents worked fine. Um, it uh, wasn't, didn't really do everything I wanted essentially. And so I've come up with a, a different method of doing it, which I, I think is a little bit better. So it all happens here, really. The top row of um, panels are a pretty uh, straightforward um, three pass and uh, final upscale. So, uh, so what happens that's really all the, 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 this video is about is, is this um, section here. So, so I turn all the nodes except for this group here, composition group, to, to never and I'll run through exactly what's happened. I'll, I'll, run, I'll, I'll run the prompt first. There you go. And then I'll, I'll, I'll explain what's happening at each level. So here we have a simple black and white 768 image. It could be 512. It happens to be 768. And this defines the sky and the land and the horizon. And one of the things I wanted to do was, was to control where my horizon was, because that decides you know, how high your camera is, which is rather useful to have control over. And you don't usually have very good control over that. Then this below is a gradient, uh, which I am compositing over the sky section. If you notice, it goes from light to dark, and I'm percentaging it over the sky. And what this does, is to decide where the light's coming from. So here, the light's coming from the right-hand side. Finally, down here, we have the content, i.e. The, the, the composition, the blocks of stuff. And I have, I have literally just drawn this in Mask Editor and uh, then inverted it. So I'm using Mask Editor as a drawing implement. But it works fine. It works fine. You only, you, you only need um, quite simple guidance. I. I I wasn't looking for a method to make specifics. If anything, I was looking for a method to allow the model room to imagine or make stuff up, but sort of, but make stuff up within the bounds I wanted to control. All of these nodes here are simple compositing. So this resizes the gradient to cover the sky. Then there's a composite to, to drop it over the top. As you see, that, that works absolutely fine. And then I, afterwards I composite this image I, uh, over the top using the mask. So you see the mask is being used here, goes up here, to the, to the composition. Now these, this panel here, I can move my subject up and down, or left to right. So I'll just move it up and, and run it. As you see, it moved down. So that's moving our subject down. And this one here does the same with the whole composition. So it moves the whole composition up or down, left or right. So with this, I can adjust my horizon height. So this is the image I'm cropping into. And you see, I just cropped this section out. So depending on which bit I crop, uh, my horizon is high or low. So I can adjust that. And I can adjust it left or right as well. Then once I have this image here, this is a black and white image and I need a color image. So I need to add the potential for colour. And I do that by uh, overlaying coloured noise. You could use a noise generator. It really doesn't matter. I'm using a uh, panel of noise made in Photoshop. I have various ones saved. And I overlay that and blend it over the top. You see the blend? So a blend node puts it over the top. And then I adjust the whole lot uh, so I like the uh, look of the tonal range. So there's several levels adjustments in here. There's one here to lighten the gradient, because I don't want it that strong in this case. And there's another one here to adjust the uh, strength of my subject. So that says how dark or, or light my subject is, which is all very well. So the next panel, we set these to always. Because we're only doing quite a small image uh, this is a sort of uh, I have a sort of um, refined and upgrade over here so I'm starting off with uh, quite a small image really it processes in in a few seconds really so uh, what you can do is try a seed out so we'll cue the prompt here we have our first image there's one thing to look at 
So this is my basic prompt. Uh, you need full colour in here so that the uh, the model will pull out the colour from that image. So you have to have full colour and I've um, weighted city that I won't need to later on. Now because this is only doing five steps and it's quite a small image, you can click through seeds until you find one you like. So you see there's another one. Well, and you get an occasional black and white one. That you don't get very many black and white ones. But as you see, you can click through pretty quickly, and it takes only about twelve seconds to do each one. So there's there's a rather a nice one. Uh, what I actually do when I'm doing this is I put in. I'll do it now. I put in a repeat latent batch into here, and because uh, it, it does it so quickly, uh, I can do twenty of them uh, and choose the one I like. So we'll we'll do that now actually because that's quite fun to do. We'll do ten. So they're back and there's our ten images which uh, took exactly one minute. So it's hardly a long time. So we can click through these. As you see, you do get us a rather nice one. I like that. And what I do is I uh, the ones I like I throw into a folder and then I can drag them back in and I'll get that seed. That's another nice one. That's rather good as well. It's like Roman galleons down there. So as you see, we've we got plenty of possibility. And it only took a minute, you could do 20. And the, 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 all you're doing is, is finding a good seed. And it's pretty easy to do. And as you see, if we bring up the little um, compositional shape here, they all, they're all related to our compositional drawing, more or less. They all have some relationship to it. Some stronger than others. But you'll notice our horizon stays high, which was part of the part of the pose and you'll also notice that um, the lighting stays pretty constant you get some lit the other way but mostly they're lit in the direction of the gradient far far more lit that way than uh, lit the other way uh, some you get occasional some lit the other way but that one's lit the other way but out, out of a batch there we've got one that's lit the other way so that's that's fine we're only dealing with probabilities here always going to happen down there. So I'm going to do one I found earlier, or seed I found earlier. So we'll run that. Okay, so we got that image there with a nice uh, with a boat in there, and we've got a nice bridge, and we go off into the distance. So, so that's pretty nice. So you, I'll just give you a quick look at the uh, prompt. It's not very exciting. So the next thing I do is uh, crop that image to my final. It's quite wide. So what I do is I crop that. And I can resize the image here. So I'm cropping it and I'm resizing it up to 1536. Uh, it was before a 102 for, by 384 and now it's becoming 1536768. And then it goes to the next module which is purely refining the image, taking it one step further than this. So the prompt has been adjusted. There's a little bit more detail about what's in the what's in the city and I don't need to wait the city because I've got the city now so we, I don't need to wait that and we have a denoise of 6.5 and the, the other one we have quite a high denoise I didn't mention that fairly high anyway it, it's 50 sometimes I take this up as high as 75 but as you take it up to 75 it adheres less to your guide shape but you might get something interesting and it's only a few seconds to Iterate it. So we'll run this one there. Okay, so there's our new city. Now as you say, it's become much grander and there's a very nice boat. I wasn't quite expecting that. And we go off nicely and we're pretty much, take you right over here, we're pretty much, we've got every feature. The hill has become, hill has become the cathedral, but never mind. I like it being a cathedral. And we've got a very nice light. Again, the light is from over this side. It's put the sun in because I I've mentioned morning sun, so it's put a sun in, but it's put it across to the right, so we still have that gradient going across. So that gradient has decided where that sun is going to go. My next stage is to process the colour of this. So we'll run that. I don't need to do a great deal to this. As you see, I, I changed the uh, brightness a little bit, the saturation I've taken down a little bit, and the gamma up a little bit. Uh, some images need more help in this section than others. And then we resize to 2048, 1024. And the final module here 
is nothing spectacularly unusual at all. There's uh, three Lauras. So the last section here is entirely to do with styling and how I want the image to be. You know, do I, I, I don't like photographs. You know, that's fo too photography for me. I don't like photographs very much. So I want to make a, a an old painting I've put in here, digital painting, and I've got a, 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 a painting Laura and an architectural Laura and uh, I've got a <laughs> derelict concrete, which um, makes the architecture a bit beaten up, which I, I like, because the architecture tends to come out too clean. Now, we don't need a big denoise, because we don't really want to move too far away from that. We don't want, we don't want um, compositional things moving around. So we've only got a denoise of 55. I'd go between 45 and 65 on this process, really. And because it's quite large of inch, I, I do a tile decode. Some people think you get seams. I never get seams, but maybe, maybe if you do a vast, um, you know, eight thousand pixel renders, maybe you get seams. I have no idea. So we'll run that. So here we are with it back, and there we go. A very nice image. There's bits of photoshopping to do. I sort of adjust the boat a little bit, I think. But on the whole, that's made a very nice image. I would then carry on and uh, upscale it. This is just a straight upscale with model. What I tend to do is, is upscale and, and uh, sharpen up, use the upscale to sharpen up details in here. So you end up with a 4096 by 2050, which I think is easily big enough. I'll go back now and uh, well, I'll just run that quickly so you can see what it looks like close to. The thing with refining and upscaling is that you want to make sure you have a step up in, each quali in quality in, at each stage. Sometimes this stage is a little bit soft, but I, so I, I find the upscale a little bit um, too sharp. So I tend to mix this one with the uh, lower resolution one in Photoshop because I, I want this to all be a bit soft here. Uh, not this, so I'll leave this soft and then make this sharp here so that uh, we get a, a nice um, a nice feel to the final image. What I'll do now is we'll set these to never and go through in a little bit more detail. <coughs> There's a lot of works. So we'll, we'll do one from scratch. So I draw this simply in Mask Editor. You, you, could, you could import something. It, it, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I happen to do it in Mask Editor because I can keep on, I can alter this and test it immediately. Which, which makes it uh, rather rather convenient. So we'll clear that and we'll, uh, we'll do something. What should we do? <laughs> got to think of something to do now. I should have thought about this first. So uh, let's make a decide. We've got a, we've got a load of stuff across. We have a lower horizon this time. Got a load of stuff across there. There we go. And uh, <clears throat> I think we have a, uh, we have one of those, one of those um, arches you get in the sea sometimes. We'll have one of them there. That looks good. And uh, you don't have to make the drawing detailed. Um, I think maybe we've got another bit of coastline there. <coughs> you only have to give little tiny hints here and there. Maybe this goes a little bit like that. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe it's C. That's a good idea. It's C. Let it, let it be C. So we'll have a bit of cliff in there. And uh, we'll have some sort of building here, shall we? Be boring. So it can literally be as simple as that. We might have a, uh, a bit of foreground rockery stuff. There we go. So we'll save that to the node and we run that and you'll see how it uh, so there we go that's our, 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 our arch going out to sea so the arch is a little bit uh, needs to be a bit narrower so we can adjust that and this is the this is where using the um, mask editor makes life easy because I can I can uh, adjust my my C arch very easily I might put a little few indications of how that breaks there. You don't have to give it many hints. Now you see our, our um, sea arch is now more likely. I'm going to change that a bit again actually. Uh, it looks more likely. Now I want the sun coming the other way. So I can, if I change my axis here to Y, and cue the prompt, then the light's going the other way now. And you see that the, the bright's on that side. I'll change it back again because I think actually X is better. There you go. See it swap over. Now I want my horizon lower. So I think I want my horizon about, that looks about right. So having lowered my horizon, I have to raise my subject. There we go. There's the subject going up. And I think a little bit more. Oh, too much. You get the drift anyway. I can put my horizon anywhere where I want. And each time it's producing this noised image. 
So I'll, I'll quickly uh, I'll quickly run run that through. And we do a repeat latent batch. We'll do six of them. So now we've got some variations. Right. So there's there's back. And as you see, there's a there's one dodgy one there. But for the most part, all these ones, uh, Horizon has um, stayed consistent. And we've got an arch each time. And uh, we've got everything everything we want from our composition really. So I'm, I might go for this one, and I will very quickly put this through the mill. If I save off this image and get its seed number, then I can paste that back into here, because it's Im important to, uh, you just do a single um, generation, otherwise it's going to put all of these through. Okay, so we've got a slightly tiny different image, but uh, still a nice one. So there we go. Next stage, we need to transfer our prompt. You can just feed the prompt across, but I, I, I often vary the prompt here slightly. I have a look at what we don't have. Um, I might put a dome instead of spires, and I might a bridge instead of a. There we go. So we run that. Oh, look at that. We hardly need to go further. Very nice. So at this point, you can decide how much you want to change it. So we'll we'll take this um, prompt away and pass it on to the next module, and we might um, come down on the fantasy a bit. Because I don't think we want to change as much, maybe, this time. And we'll come down the DNIs to 45. Because we've already got a pretty good image. So uh, so I'm not sure I want to change that all that much. And here it is back. There's our scene. I'll bring the original, what we started with, across, shall I? So here's our original noisy image. Which, as you see, is pretty much the same in layout as our file. There you go. There's one thing I should have mentioned maybe in passing. Let's go back to the first module. If you want to do your own sketch, then just do a, uh, a draw a transparent PNG with a transparency, uh, and you can you can stick it in here in instead of this. So you don't have to draw it in mask editor in this one. I'm used to uh, uh, drawing in funny shapes, but. Um, so if you wanted to bring an image in here, you could insert it at several places. So uh, you could do a drawing of PNG and import it here, or you could bring the image in here and just use this bit, just just use the bit that puts the noise over. So you could do your drawing outside, in which case you don't need any of this. So you, you could do a little drawing like this and bring it in at any stage. So uh, you can use it as a, as a method of basically turning uh, an outline silhouette drawing in three tones in, into, a, into a full colour one. And that's it. I hope that's all clear. It's quite a difficult one to explain. <laughs> to, I've had to have a couple of goes explaining it to make it clear to myself. But uh, essentially uh, the theme of the video is um, creating your composition, controlling the light, controlling the horizon and uh, the content, but not controlling it so much that the model doesn't have room to manoeuvre to do uh, fun and interesting stuff, I think. So it's it's having control, but the right sort of control. And I find control net uh, is too much control. Uh, you can do it down to very low levels, in which case it goes random. Uh, it doesn't quite produce the right sort of control. So, you know, I want to I want to control which way the light is going, but I don't want to draw the whole thing out. So this is a sort of um, compromise. And the other advantage over control nets is, of course, control nets are, uh, are computationally quite heavy, so they're slow. Whereas this, you can iterate um, and find your ideal seed uh, at a tremendous rate. So here's a few examples, anyway, of the same method put into use. And as you can see, you can get quite a variation and, uh, and difference of subject. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening.